As defined in the American Heritage Dictionary, second college edition, the noun rock is defined as a relatively hard, naturally occurring material of mineral origin. A naturally formed mineral mass. That's not rock. Play with the devil, die with the devil. Now, back to good, wholesome, politically correct entertainment. <laughs> yeah, politically correct entertainment, my ass. How you guys doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem, baby. Where we're the place for all your biker news. And I gotta emphasize, biker news. You know, we're getting a lot of new uh, people over on the YouTube channel, which, hey, man, I love you know it's great that you guys are subscribing to us but for the new people biker news underline we are not a mc protocol channel we are opinion and we cover what's going on in the news so please don't get us mixed up today on the extended edition we have Skid Row, baby. R-E-M and Ozzy Osbourne going to be playing over there, as well as our extra segment that you do not get over on YouTube or Facebook. Yes, you don't get that stuff here on YouTube and Facebook. So get on your favorite podcast and platform and listen to the extended edition. You can actually leave messages you know, call in and leave messages, and I might actually play them on the show for you. Bitch, moan, gripe, whatever you have to say. So, let's cue that intro. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Right on. Okay, uh, yesterday's episode, I started with the biker news, and boy, I didn't make people happy, man. Uh, you know what? I'm sorry you got butt hurt. You know, where's your monologue? You're supposed to do the monologue, then the news, then, uh, you know, your final thoughts. What's going on with you, Hollywood? Okay, I told you yesterday that we would try it out, see what you guys think, and I guess you didn't like it. <laughs> to say the least so i'm gonna go back to the original format don't get ball hurt uh you know i know i pissed on some people's wheaties so we'll go back to the normal way of doing things hey you know what i just tried man get off my nuts oh uh, one of the biggest things and i'm actually doing a editorial over on harleyliberty.com and it will be coming out monday don't forget to vote on Tuesday, though. Uh, it will be coming out on Monday. Is the uh, condition of Harley Davidson right now? Uh, their third quarter earnings were up, which is a good thing. The problem with that is they're using a magic. Uh, trick on you as we go through the, these news stories today. You'll see what I'm talking about. I couldn't believe I would see the day. Where Harley Davidson says outright that it's going to get rid of some of its dealerships. And then, then it's going to let outside distributors sell their motorcycles. My first question is going to be, how do you dealers feel about that? It's bad enough that they're cutting inventory right now, cutting the workforce. Uh, they basically said overseas expansion is a, you know, a non-starter with this new CEO. But could you imagine, what is it, a million dollars just to get a franchise or something like that from Harley-Davidson? Could you imagine putting that kind of money into a business... And you already are dictated by what Harley Davidson says you should do. If you do anything against them, they're butthurt and they threaten to pull your dealership, even though you stuck a lot of freaking money in there. But to know that they're cutting their dealer network or pruning, as they say, 
only to let outside distributors sell their bike? Companies messed up, man. And they also said that they're going to be concentrating on the middle age rider. They don't want to concentrate on the younger generation. So my second question is going to be, okay, that strategy might work for a couple years now while you got all that nostalgia going on where, you know, it was my age group and older that said, hey, you know, you needed a Harley Davidson, uh, look like a biker, ride like a biker, whatever the hell it is. You had people tattooing the logo all over them so you get free advertisement. But what's going to happen when these younger people get into middle age? What they're going to bring to you, and I think this is where it's dead, your, uh, this is really going to kill your freaking business, but uh, the younger generation don't really care about Harley. They don't. They think anybody that rides a Harley Davidson, uh, that's a grandpa's bike. True, a lot of them ride sports bike, but it's also true about their thinking. You no longer need a Harley Davidson. Why? It was originally because after World War II, everybody knows the history, everybody knows the story. But that was over 70-something years ago. 75, almost 80 years ago. To say the least, that kind of thinking isn't around anymore with these newer, younger kids. They only care about two wheels, and most of them go towards the Jap bikes like Suzuki, Honda, Yamaha. Uh, some are into the Ducati. Some are into the British bikes because Triumph, man, is uh, really coming up right now. And then you have another problem. Those middle-aged people that you are trying to target are now going with Indian motorcycles because they're disenchanted with the way Harley-Davidson has been acting. Not only did the company stake its whole future on this live wire crap and it flopped, not to mention the thousand uh, bikes that were recalled and you only sold 1,600 of the damn things, they're disenchanted with you. So now they're going to Indian. If you haven't seen the Indian 2021 models, I don't know where the hell you've been. They got some badass stuff coming out. They also have a nostalgic bike coming out. It looks like a cafe racer. And this is something many people have argued that Harley Davidson needs to do is go a little bit retro, man. Could you imagine now you're targeting the middle age? Okay. Well, throw out, and I'm not talking about SNS. I know they have it. I'm talking about a production line, panhead or knucklehead. Even a shovelhead design. Do you know how many damn people in the middle age group right now would buy that? Run a limited edition. Do something that says you know what the hell's going on in the ground. Your overseas expansion, I can get. You know what? I got to admit, I understand where you're coming from. Because Harley-Davidson, you're too expensive over in Australia, India, freak, even Canada, you're too expensive. Europe, nobody's going to buy your bikes because, again, they don't have an, uh, an attitude that you have to have a Harley-Davidson. They feel that these other makes and models are a lot better made, a lot more reliable, and they are correct 110%. I love it when people, you know, especially my age, okay, it's not the younger ones, but they go, well, you know, you're always saying you like your Boulevard more than your Fat Boy. Just get rid of the Fat Boy then. Well, I like the Fat Boy because it's an old one. It's carbureted. I didn't like uh, having to uh, pay big money to get the cam tensioners uh, done because Harley screwed that one up from the start. But I like the Boulevard because it's a more comfortable ride. I think it's better made. So yeah, I like the Suzuki. That, I have to say, is my top brand is Suzuki. Are we, you know, I've had dozens upon dozens of Harley Davidsons over the years. 
And I don't think that they ride as good as the other ones. I don't think uh, they're reliable as the other ones. And I have to say, these manufacturers like Honda, Suzuki, and all them, they actually care about reliability. They care about their customers' input. They just do not take it for granted like Harley-Davidson does. You have taken it for granted for so many years that you're the best. 50%. Well, that's what everybody always says about Harley-Davidson in the United States. 50%. They got the, uh, you know, that's their cut of the market share. Like I always say, you're not telling the truth. You're not. Harley-Davidson only has, you know, 50% of the big bike market big bike market we're talking baggers that market and by the way i did like the bagger races that was kick ass man uh but anyway they do not do not repeat have the market for anything under 1200 cc's and that's what most riders get when they're coming into the scene you know, I'd have to say the 883 with uh, the mod kit up to 1200. Yeah, they sell the sporties, but that's it. They do not own 50% of the U.S. market for motorcycles. Now, before I came on, I should have looked up at the uh, statistics about Indian motorcycles because the Exodus. From Harley Davidson riders to over to go over to India now is unfreaking believable. But I will be talking about this magic trick that they're trying to pull over your eyes. Meaning, okay, you're cutting your dealer network, you're cutting inventory. That is something they tried doing in the 90s and it worked. But but they didn't get loyalty with that you had people that yeah would spend big money on a bike but two years later sell it for almost nothing and you created another competitor in the used bike market what sense does that make right there so that is what's coming up on the news. After that, I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, this thing out in Pennsylvania. Uh, there is new policies coming up about uh, undercover officers and the drinking policy. This has to do with uh, the incident with uh, Kopi's Bar the pagans and uh, all that kind of stuff that melee that broke out but uh let's go over to the news real quick Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at harleyliberty.com founded in 2012 insane throttle biker news has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene go over now and bookmark harleyliberty.com rock on Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And that was Skid Row, baby. Oh, man, I remember that one in high school, 18 in life. Uh, oh, that was the air for music back then. This new air, I don't know what to freaking tell you. Uh, coming up is going to be R.E.M. and Ozzy Osbourne. Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Pittsburgh police rules for drinking while undercovered revealed at a meeting. A high-ranking uh, Pittsburgh police official revealed for the first time publicly uh, Tuesday the department's policy on alcohol consumption for on-duty undercover officers. Assistant Chief uh, Bickerstaff and Police Chief uh, Schubert appeared before the Citizen P uh, Police Review Board to discuss remedial actions the department took after undercover de uh, detectives brawled with members of the Pagan's Motorcycle Club 
at Kopi's Bar on the south side. And this was in uh, 2018. We actually were able to talk to witnesses. We showed the video. It was a freaking conundrum, man. It was pretty bad. And a lot of people were saying, well, why didn't the pagans fight back, blah, blah, blah. Y you wouldn't have either, man. They pulled the damn badges and the guns. At that point, what are you going to do? Get hit with, uh, you know, aggravated uh, battery on a cop, looking at more time. I think they played it right. Uh, the t charges were dropped against them. Whatever it was, I forgot. Maybe it's going to be in this article. But I believe they did the right thing. So for those that are saying they should have done this and do done that, you know, that's armchair court even back in, man. It's easy to say what you would have done. But if you're in the situation, it would have been a totally different thing. Uh, Assistant Chief uh, Bickerstaff, in explaining to the CPRB policy changes since the brawl, said undercover officers are only allowed to consume two drinks within a four-hour span if it is necessary to keep their cover. The officers also are not allowed to drive within that time span. The rule was implemented last year, the Post-Gazette uh, reported in uh, 2019 of August, but its details were not disclosed until the meeting Tuesday night. In addition to discussing the policy, Assistant Chief Biggerstaff said the department has reevaluated its strategic plans and operational procedures in an attempt to prevent similar incidences from occurring in the future. Ass uh, Assistant Chief Bickerstaff also said alcohol testing of undercover officers before and after an operation is being considered. The incident at Kopi's during which four undercover detectives fought with members of the Pagans Club during a nuisance bar operation was taped by the bar security camera. The footage shows the undercover detectives David Honick Brian Burgunder, David Lincoln, and Brian Martin drinking for several hours before the confrontation with the motorcycle club members, who also were drinking at the bar. Four members were arrested after the fight, but the charges against them were later dropped. All four have since sued the city, alleging that the detectives used excessive force, which you can see in that video plain and clear. The Allegheny uh, County uh, District Attorney's Office announced that it would not pursue charges against the detectives. <laughs> but they started everything. You know, you would hit them, you would have got a battery. But, you know, nothing happens to them. And I believe uh, that's why you're seeing so much unrest in this country. Because Leo sometimes doesn't be held accountable and there's two tiers of justice in this country. And people are pretty sick and tired of it. The CPRB meeting was held just a week before voters in Pittsburgh have a chance to potentially strengthen the investigating agency. There is a ballot question November 3rd, which again, I don't care where you are in this country. Vote. Vote. The polls are garbage. And I'll talk about that later on in the next segment on the extended edition. That asks voters whether they want to expand the powers of the Independent Citizen Police Review Board to allow the board to require police officers to participate in investigations, conduct performance audits of the police bureau, and prevent the removal of board members except for just cause and with city council approval. City Councilman Ricky Burgess proposed the measure and in July, council unanimously approved the decision to include it on the ballot. The seven-member independent board appointed by the mayor and council is currently empowered by the city's home rule charter to investigate selected citizens' uh, complaints, that concerns me, selected, alleging uh, police misconduct, establish a mediation process, provide recommendations to the mayor and police chief regarding disciplinary policies and police conduct, hold public hearings, and subpoena witnesses. So that is what has come out so far 
with the result of those undercovers going after the pagans, I would uh, tell you, go ahead and look up Kopi's Bar or something, Pagans, on uh, YouTube and stuff in the videos right there, or you can look at it, our uh, episode to probably pop up with it. Now, Harley Davidson, here we go, baby. They sell fewer motorcycles and make more money revitalizing the brand is top priority leader stay and the stock price soars. This is by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Harley-Davidson said Tuesday that it posted third quarter net income of $120 million, up 39% from the same time in 2019, which if you look at 2019 numbers, they weren't good, so it would have been easy for this to go, as the company continues in seemingly round-the-clock effort to revitalize its brand. How are you going to revitalize it when a lot of people are leaving in droves to Indian? In a conference call with investment analysts on Tuesday, Joaquin Zietz, uh, Harley's chairman, president, and CEO, made it abundantly clear that the market share and uh, sales volume declines are not the company's major focus right now. Oh, market share. He even he knows he's losing that fight. Well, we will not pursue growth just for growth's sake. Harley-Davidson has tightened its inventory and eliminated, you're hearing this, right? Eliminated promotional pricing, even as competitors have increased theirs. Harley is also exiting, exiting international markets where sales are flat to non-existent to refocus on its markets in North America, Europe, and some portion of of Asia Pacific, even though Indians one of the biggest uh, users of motorcycles, uh, the goal is to be in markets where the company believes it can solidify the Harley Davidson brand and grow in part by reinvigorating its dealership network and those dealers' profits and build on relationships it has with existing customers. Your relationships with the uh, existing customers ain't the best, Harley. Well, the company is wrapping up the competitive spirit of its employees and dealers to promote the heritage and value of the Harley-Davidson brand. <laughs> and this wasn't a pre uh, presentation to investment analysts building more, uh, more than building machines. We stand for the timeless pursuit of adventure. Going forward, Harley-Davidson plans to focus on 50 markets primarily... In North America, Europe, and parts of Asia Pacific that represent a high percentage of the company's expected volume and growth potential. Under the new strategy, 36 of Harley's highest uh, potential markets will remain with the resources and autonomy within a clearly defined framework. Catch that, right? To best drive growth and prop uh, profitability. 17 markets will transition to more uh, cost-effective distributor models. This includes uh, Indium, where Hero Motocorp will be exclusively Harley-Davidson distributor and licensed to develop and sell a range of Harley-Davidson motorcycles. Develop. Harley plans to exit 39 markets due to volume, profitability, or potential that does not support continuing investment. And he keeps on going on, and they're talking about the Stark uh, market price. Uh, it's been the highest since 2015, and this is all a part of the rewire effort. So what they're doing is kind of what AutoZone Auto Parts did, and, and you probably don't know the story on that. Uh, the stock price was at like fourteen, fifteen uh, uh, dollars, and next thing you know, this new CEO comes in, and their whole thing was to get that stock prices up. It doubled, tripled, and then split. Uh, so it looks like this is what Al Bundy is trying to do right now. Uh, a little more, uh, you know, concerning. He is calling the Live Wire an extraordinary product. 
The ones you just recalled the thousand uh, for the software, right? Uh, leading charge in electric segment. Who the hell is he fooling? The live wire is not leading that part of the industry. That is zero motorcycles leading that. Uh, he gave a vote of confidence to the company's electric live wire model in advance of the company deciding which motorcycles it will eliminate from its lineup. And of course, they still haven't come out with their 2021 product line. But Indian has. They got the head start. The Milwaukee-based uh, motorcycle manufacturer also announced Tuesday, we covered that, the 39 uh, countries in response to a question from Robert H. Bird and Company uh, on uh, the call. He spoke highly of the live wire, which Harley introduced under previous CEO. The company delivered the uh, first live wire cycles to dealers about a year ago with a list price of $29,000. You to get a damn good freaking F-150 or Silverado for that. Who the hell's going to pay like that? Oh, yeah. The customers that Harley-Davidson now want to target. <laughs> they launched uh, Livewire in an effort to appeal to young and environmentally conscious riders who want an electric motorcycle. Quote, we believe electric needs to play an important role in the future, Harley-Davidson. It's still in an emerging category, so sales volumes are relative. Now it's, you know, because your price. But from what I can see through all this, we actually believe that live wire is the best selling on the highway or dual cycle in the <laughs> Who what kind of drugs are you on, really? Are you serious with that? <laughs> actually selling more than double the next high year freaking an idiot in these fucking media. They never ever back check this stuff. Uh, Kennison asked whether Harley was girding for possible gas-powered engine emission regulations in California. Newsom, uh, who's the governor, issued an executive order in September mandating that 100% of its in-state sales of new passenger cars and trucks be zero emission by 2035. You just got to love them. Looney left this, man. They love killing businesses. While the mandate doesn't impact motorcycles, it's not hard to connect the dots. And uh, we are fully uh, committed to electric, he says, not just because of California. And again, it voluntarily recalled about a thousand live wires due to a software issue. You know what? Fact check these people. Uh, let's go to a good story here. Uh, Bay Area Biker Groups uh, gives computer to children in need of them. About a group of Bay Area bikers. They're supplying computers to kids who need them. They're going hog wild, and it is what's right with Tampa Bay. When these bikers get together, they do more than just ride. They're part of a group called Bikers Cap. They refurbish computers and give them to kids who need them. We're able to, to help in making that happen. Uh, it's just great. Maureen Tracy runs a student camp for children, and she says the need is great. This is awesome. When I heard about this, I just had to reach out to them because I think it's fantastic what they're doing. William Santiago got involved with a group two years ago. He was donating his old computers and realized that he could help. As a volunteer time, is able to do something that I enjoy and, and still help others. Member Mystic Thompson knows the group's generosity firsthand. My son, who's a special needs child, needed something to help him through school, and, by, and Greg was right there holding his hand out to help me. In 11 years, they have given out more than 200 computers. Service work is part of my makeup, um, and I'm just pr proud to be part of the organization. What a need there is for these devices for so many families. Uh, man, that's pretty damn cool right there, man. Uh, again, they're called Biker's Cap. Uh, if you have an old uh, computer in Tampa Bay, man, uh, go give it to them, man. They'll uh, help it. Uh, but let's go to another one that I actually think Harley-Davidson is doing good to get involved in. Uh, because this is all the rage right now is these electric uh, bicycles. And they're getting involved in them. If you're over on the radio, come look at YouTube and stuff. There's a picture of uh, one. 
Uh, it has spun out a new business, which I have always argued that Harley Davidson needs to do. They to, enable to compete against freaking Polaris. You got to get other products out there besides motorcycles, like you used to do in the old days with the golf carts, snowmobiles. But this is a great business to get into. Uh, they spun out a new business dedicated to electric bicycles and plans to bring its first line of products to the market in spring. Uh, the new business model uh, called Serial One Cycle Company started as a project within the Motorcycle Manufacturer's Product Development Center. The, the name comes from Serial Number One, the nickname for the Harley-Davidson oldest known motorcycle. The Pedal Assist Electric uh, Bicycle uh, Company is launched amid a booming e-bike uh, industry fueled by the growing demand in the wake of COVID-19. Uh, the global e-bicycle market was estimated to be over $15 billion, and it's uh, projected to grow uh, at an annual rate of more than 6%. Rock and roll. Its new uh, Serial 1 didn't provide uh, performance details or other specs. However, the company did release several photos, and uh, you know, in July, Harley Davidson cut 700 jobs from its global operations, and they talk about rewire again and all that good stuff. Uh, but it doesn't have a price uh, that I can see here. But if they start uh, doing that crap, where oh, it's going to cost you four thousand dollars for this. They need to buy a used Sportster for that. Why even go with the bike? Harley Davidson's worst freaking uh, problem is it kills itself. <laughs> now, interesting one. I actually got this uh, texted to me out of the beat. Vegan Knights Motorcycle Club easy riders take to the road to save animals. And I got to say here, you know what? Vegan, you, you do your thing. My son's a vegan. Me, I'm a meat eater. I'm a meat eater. I love my pork. I love my friggin' uh, beef. You know, the more the better. Every year, man, I get a uh, pig slaughtered and stuff like that. Keep the fridge going. Uh, but anyway, when you think of a motorcycle club, you imagine a group of guys and gals riding on big black Harley sporting leather and chains, rolling up to a bar for beers and burgers. But do you also imagine them asking the waitress to make it vegan plant based burger? There's a lot of people going vegan. Again, me, I like a damn good beef burger. Well, cut your engine since that is the reality. The Vegan Knights Motorcycle Club takes to the open road in vegan leather and big black Harleys to roll up to dive bars and gather around meatless meals to talk about veganism with any locals who will listen for the purpose of run it, uh, raising money for animal sanctuaries. There was a recent interview, and again, you can go to thebeat.com and check out this interview. It's about five minutes long. Uh, and then they, you know, she asked, what are your tips uh, for being a tough guy? And Barack uh, Sark, uh, to me, being tough is just being tough with, in a personal definition, what does being tough? Uh, tough mean to you and defining that to me means living with a purpose otherwise it's meaningless good stuff right there since uh you want to leave a legacy so for me on a bike i'm a tough guy but i always remember the purpose of that tough guy it's standing up for the voiceless and for the animals and then they uh, got pictures of ducks and dogs and cows Again, I'm a meat eater, man. To each his own, but I'm a meat eater, baby. Uh, so we're going to go to REM, and I'll see you on the other side for my final thoughts for the YouTube and Facebook segment. Unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And welcome back. That was REM man. old school, baby. Old school. Don't forget to go over on uh, our other channel, Hollywood and China Dow. Man, do we get into some subjects over there? Uh, we go live, take uh, people's questions, and uh, just have a bunch of fun over there. 
uh go ahead it's uh you know what i'll put the the channel in the description box of the platform it's in stuff also if you like the donate help the show you can through our cash app dollar sign motorcycle madhouse uh, again the youtube uh, super chat really love you we're actually thinking about doing a membership type of deal if you wanted to get involved with that that also helps to keep the show going amidst all this damn censorship and that's one of the damn things that we're going to be covering uh on the extended podcast uh edition is the censorship hearings today uh can you believe that uh the twitter ceo said uh well you know we don't uh you know censor the ayatollah on iran but you can the american president unfreaking real some of the answers that were uh coming out of them and again uh, we're gonna cover that stuff uh but as far as uh my final thoughts on this stuff uh yeah harley davidson what are you doing you want to build brand loyalty, but you only want to stick with one segment of the population. You already tossed uh, the younger generation to the side. And again, like my argument in the beginning, you do that, they're eventually going to grow up to be big boys in their middle ages. And they're going to bring the same thinking with them that, hey... Harley Davidson, you know what? That's just a brand of bike. There's so many out there that are more reliable, and we don't care about your product. And for you guys to do that, I think you're cutting your own damn throat. That's just my personal opinion. And again, my personal opinion for the new people joining the show, this is Biker News. This is not a motorcycle club channel. Yes, we cover a lot of news that has to deal with them. And like I always say, my opinions are my opinions. I get them. This is a free country like, you know, I think it's supposed to be. So, and you get your opinions. You don't agree. You don't agree. That's great. That's, uh, you know, that allows us to have debate. But we are biker news on this deal. Uh, so, again, these are my opinions. If you don't like them, that's on. You, I piss on a lot of people's Wheaties, man. Uh, but I do think that Harley Davidson is right getting into other markets as far as the e bikes, uh, the electric motorcycles. You know what? That was a joke when you said live wires leading the damn way. That is a big joke, man. Everybody knows that zero is leading the way out there. And. In the article on HarleyLiberty.com, because I'm starting up my uh, editorial opinion columnist section on that again, because uh, a lot of people have been missing that, so, you know, I'm uh, following the way that you guys want to go. Uh, I talk about this in uh, specifically in the article. Who the hell is running your, man your, your marketing strategy? I did a video about uh, the million dollar bogan, and uh, as far as I hear now, I might be wrong. I heard even Adam Sandoval has uh, gotten away from Harley Davidson more into other type of stuff because what they did to him. You're getting all this free damn advertisement, and you're screwing with people. Uh, what is your thinking? Would you? You know what? I wish a rep would actually return my emails for uh, a request for comment. They never do. But I wish they would tell everybody, well, what is your main goal here? Is your main goal to let other people come in and take over your, you know, because you are saying you're pruning your dealer network. How that helps, I don't know. You think you want more dealerships to be able to sell your products, but you want to get rid of a lot of them. So you're using the 1994 strategy of limiting the inventory and charging higher prices because you're looking for that range of customer. And the problem with that, uh, you know, strategy was again, after a couple years, they get bored and sell it on the used market. And you're competing against yourself on the used market. Harley Davidsons are not holding their value like they once did. You can get cheap Harleys all over the damn place. All you have to do is look, and the internet has, you know, made that process very easy in order to find a Harley Davidson that's cheap. Most people are paying, uh, you know, a little over wholesale costs for them now. 
because people want to go to a better model of bike better manufacturer of bike so you know al bundy the shoes uh salesman at the head of harley you know you might have got your profits up this quarter and that's just because you know last uh third quarter this time last year your sales sucked so you know you're patting your guys self on the back where what you should do is worry about what the hell's coming down the line and where Al Bundy is leading this company. Christ's sake, he hired a CFO that came from Tyson Foods. Maybe you need to get people in there that actually understand the product, that actually ride. But I don't think that's going to happen, and I think the further down the line that Harley-Davidson goes... You're just destroying yourself. You're destroying the brand because, you know, you're rolling out this new policy. You already freaking alienated a lot of freaking bikers that are jumping the Indian motorcycles. And you're in a situation right now where earlier in the, you know, early years, you were able to do what you wanted to do without competition. But now with Indian, you got competition bad. And let's not uh, forget... For those that think, well, Harley-Davidson's always pulled itself out, that was only with the help of the government in the 80s where they put 40% tariffs on a foreign-made motorcycles. Don't forget that. So it seems that Harley-Davidson has a tradition of financial problems. They have a tradition of not listening to the people who actually buy their motorcycles. And now to turn on the dealer network like they're doing is just obscene. You're going to be cutting dealerships while Indian is adding more and more to it. Sad state of affairs, if you ask me, and that's my opinion on that. And again, that's just my opinion. Uh, as far as that thing with Kobe's Bar and stuff, again, I encourage you guys to look at that video and see if these changes in their policies are actually going to do something. I'll have to argue no, because until you hold the people accountable, which is missing from there, nothing's ever going to change, man. It's always different uh, the way top people say that things need to be done and the action on the streets. And hopefully the pagans get, uh, you know, far into their lawsuit and stuff. Hopefully, uh, just because of who they are, they don't get discriminated against. Hopefully they get their justice. We will see. But what happened in that bar was terrible, man. I had one of the uh, girls on, uh, talked about it, how it went down. And again, for those people that say they should have done this and that, that's armchair quarterbacking right there, knowing damn well you wouldn't have done it. So why go on the internet in the comment section and say, yeah, I would have done this or I would have done that. When you know damn well you wouldn't have went back against the cops, man. That's just BS right there. Now, if they didn't have their guns and badges on, that would be a whole different damn story. But they have arresting powers, so <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, co you know, the, coming up on the extended... Uh, you know edition of the podcast here we're gonna have some uh, ozzy osbourne and then i'm gonna be talking about this uh censorship uh hearing that they had in the senate today and that is one thing that is really affecting us on youtube we're getting freaking uh slammed with these 18 and uh older kind of crap where you can't earn or anything and that's why you see a lot of creators going out there saying you know what if you can donate by cash app or in the super chat or we'll start the memberships up that would really help because we are getting hit hard right now and i'm not the only channel man most of my videos end up that way because of what i talk about uh don't help that it says news and anything news you got to go to the mainstream media but uh other channels are getting really hit hard uh from my understanding and i don't know if this is true because i haven't heard it i don't even think uh what's his name uh big kaz I think he got uh, a suspension for two weeks or something. I don't know. I, I Again, I don't know. It's just what I heard. And if that's true, that shows you just how bad it is. 
uh, you can see in the super chats all the time that there were uh, retracted messages. You know, people ain't doing nothing wrong. They're taking down their comments. And it's like, holy crap. And people wonder why I love the radio, man, because it don't happen on our podcast and platforms. It only happens on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook right now, and it, it, it's freaking disgusting. But anyway, let's play some uh, Ozzy Osbourne for those over on the YouTube and Facebook channel. Thanks for freaking being around, and don't forget the Cash App, Dollar Sign, Motorcycle Madhouse. Every little bit helps. Uh, we appreciate it. I'll see you guys on the other end. We're going to be talking about some tech censorship right now. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on. Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys.